what is up? It's me, Bernadette Naul. And for today's video, I'm going to share you my thoughts and learnings that I learned from reading the book called Out of Our Minds. So, ipapakita ko sa inyo yung libro. Ayan siya. This book is written by Sir Ken Robinson. And just a little background for the author of the book. Sir Ken Robinson is a renowned leader in the field of creative development as well as an author, speaker, and consultant. He is Professor Emeritus of Education at the University of Warwick. So, back to the topic. This book will show to readers why creativity is more relevant than ever before as well as how to change their mindset and outlook on the subject in order to succeed in today's business world. Many people have a misapprehension about creativity. They believe it is a gift, a talent reserved for the fortunate few who are born with abundance of artistic ability to write, compose music, or even in paint. As you would expect, this isn't the case. So, take a glance on your surroundings. All in your environment is the product of the work of creative individuals like the electronic devices we use in our online class, the washing machine we use to wash our dirty clothes, the umbrella we use against the intense sunlight or to keep us from getting wet in the rain. When you're not feeling better, you take medicine. As time passes, the things that have been invented will improve. The most important attribute you can possess is creativity. It is something that can be taught to everyone, provided that the world's future is more unpredictable than it has ever been. However, it necessitates dedication and hard work. Sir Ken Robinson asserts that educational programs have been founded on economic and philosophical assumptions from a different era and for different purposes. The general principle in education is that subjects should be taught predominantly from a deductive, mathematical, and objective perspective. According to him, this leads to a lot of information being produced but just a few forms of thought. He believes that all topics and concerns should be considered not only from an academic standpoint, but also from other perspectives. Other than words and numbers, information can be gained in a variety of ways. As a consequence, a more realistic approach is needed. He proposes an educational criterion that recognizes and values various modes of intelligence as well as connections between disciplines. According to the author, universities today are not adequately proportioning all of society's economic needs. The model would be more acceptable if education strengthened other elements of the rationalist deductive system. Our developed economy needs people who can think creatively. 
which universities and schools are failing to produce. The current education system in universities and schools is outdated, having been designed to meet different needs at different times. This method puts just too much importance on academic ability, which involves collecting knowledge and memorizing it in order to be tested in a written test. Theoretical research is the primary source of knowledge, which is essential, but not the only one that our culture today requires. This method, for example, does not foster the practical side of the work we want to create. We could argue for a long time about the construction of one room. But when we put the ideas into effect, we discover that not everything goes as planned. As a result, this system prevents students from gaining any of the knowledge gained by experimentation and trial and error. In many schools, inadequate time is spent on this. In fact, in many schools, almost no time is spent on this. Furthermore, many of the principles that students memorize are lost over time because they are no longer considered relevant because we no longer have to face these tests. With these education levels, I believe our country is going in the wrong direction. In order to meet the demands of today's society, more realistic education is needed. Not only in schools, but also in companies, creativity should be cultivated. This can be aided by cultivating an environment that actively encourages the sharing of ideas and creativity. Risk should be encouraged. Experimentation with ideas should be welcomed and failure should not be viewed as a setback but rather as a necessary part of the success process. Weakening departmental boundaries can be one way to enhance cross-disciplinary collaboration. Humans use their imagination to see well beyond their current situation. People can travel back in time by remembering memories, comprehend the present by considering various views, and predict the future by imagining various scenarios. Creativity is the use of one's creativity at work. A person with creatively thinking will not only see a bottle but many other things it can create such as a sprinkler, a pinky bottle bunk, a vase, a plastic box dispenser, a pencil case, or something that is more convenient can make their life simpler and less expensive. The same can be said for any material, sound, and a small detail in our environment. Innovation occurs as people bring their innovative ideas into action. Innovative methods are the foundation of our society. So don't waste your time memorizing endless list of facts. If they can be used to create something different, then facts can be valuable. Rather than believing that having more facts can make you a better worker, 
always remember that only creativity will really make you valuable. Everyone will learn how to do the job the way it has always been done. But only exceptional and creative people can think of ways to improve it. By reading the book titled Out of Our Minds, we can learn lessons. First, misapprehension about the idea of innovation. When it comes to fostering creativity in their organizations, many managers make mistakes. They are constantly afraid that if they do plan to go through with it, they will be solely responsible for coming up with new ideas. Managers and business leaders, on the other hand, must recognize that a leader is someone who provides an atmosphere in which others can be innovative and is inspired to do so. Second, modern businesses rely on creativity to differentiate themselves. You must also be able to think creatively, not just the uh, well-educated because in today's world, rules change quickly. And only those that are adaptable enough to change with their surroundings and think of new ways to meet customers' increasing demands will be able to keep up. And third, a creative process stages. There are two stages to a creative process. First is to come with new ideas and the second is to assess the ones that have been created. Not every suggestion can or should be considered. The majority of them will need refinement, although a few require rejection. So, that is for today. I hope you enjoyed this video.